In this video, I'd like to look at angle changes and the definition of shear strain that are appropriate for finite deformation cases. So the way we'll start this is we'll look at a material point capital X and we'll consider two infinitesimal vectors A and B uh, in the reference configuration here. And so and they're separated by an angle we'll call capital theta. So this is going to set up and then we're going to look at how this angle changes when the vectors A and B map into the deformed configuration. So A and B are going to be infinitesimal and the angle between them is just the arc cosine of their dot product divided by their norms. So A dot B divided by the norm of A and divided by the norm of B. Now uh, it, it, we can rewrite this also slightly as the arc cosine of the dot product of the two unit vectors that are aligned with A and B. So I have a unit vector here, EA, and a unit vector here, EB. Okay, and, and so the norms of EA is equal to the norm of EB is equal to 1. So that's the setup there. So EA is just A divided by its norm and EB is B divided by its norm. Now after deformation we have the deformed body BT and FA maps or A maps to FA and B maps to FB and now they're separated by an angle theta and they're sitting at some point little x. Uh, the angle itself in the deformed configuration is the arc cosine of FA dotted with FB divided by the norm of FA and the norm of FB. So I can uh, play the usual game. I'm going to move the F to the other side of the dot product, so it's going to become an F transpose. So I have A dotted with F transpose FB, again divided by the norms. And now I can take the top and the bottom of the fraction inside the arc cosine argument and I'll divide it by top and bottom by norm A and norm B. So I have a, norm, a division by norm A there and a division by norm A there, so they cancel. And division by norm B and norm B there. And I've written, for F transpose F, I've written C, the right Cauchy green deformation tensor. So now what you can see is that uh, I have something that looks a little bit more familiar. And in particular, in the numerator, I have EA dotted with C acting on EB. And in the denominator, I have the stretches in the direction EA and the stretch in the direction EB. So we get this kind of slightly more compact formula for the new angle theta. So we have the new angle theta is given to us by this relationship here. If we want the change, we just simply subtract uh, the original angle with respect to the new angle. Now, uh, shear strain has a very particular definition. The shear strain gamma is defined to be the original angle minus the new angle when the two directions A and B are orthogonal to each other. So A dot B equals zero. So that's the definition of shear strain. So you pick a point and you pick two directions that are orthogonal to each other, and then you can talk about the, the shear strain at that point with respect to those two directions. If I plug in for A and B being orthogonal, capital theta, well, it's 90 degrees, so it's pi over 2. And then I can bring over my other relationship here for little theta. So I'll get minus the arc cosine of EA dotted with CEB divided by the stretch in the A direction, or the EA direction, and the stretch in the B direction. And sometimes you'll also see the phrase uh, referred to this formula as the orthogonal engineering shear strain. So those are all synonyms to each other.